In this video, we are going to be learning about certain chord properties and how to apply them into interesting problems with circles. So let's start off with a little exploratory here I have for you to try and figure out a rule. So Mr. Fodi has a secret about the properties that make distances equal in a circle. Can you figure out this rule? Well, here we have on this side, AC is equal to BC. So AC, line segment AC, is equal to line segment BC, okay? On this side here, AC is not equal to BC. So line segment AC is not equal to BC. So these are not bisected. Let's look at this next one. Here, once again, I have line segment AC from A to C is the same distance from C to B. On this side here, AC is not the same distance from C to B. So remember, when you make up your rule, I want you guys to make sure you focus on using certain definitions that we've been learning in this unit in key terms. Now you might be starting to see a pattern here. Why are these always, this green line, always bisected? So then AC is equal to BC. And why on this side the green line is not bisected? Where AC is never equal to BC. Let's take a look at another one here. Here's my next one. Here I have AC is equal to BC. Look at it again. On this one here, I have AC is not equal to BC. Okay, let's take a look at one more. On these ones here, I have again AC is equal to BC. So this line AB is bisected at C, so AC is equal to BC. Now this one here, AC is not equal to BC, or we cannot definitively prove it. Now, what is my secret here? All of these are line AB is bisected. So the green line tends to be bisected by the red line. On all of these, the green line is not bisected on the red line, or we cannot prove it. Now, why is that? What is my rule? I want you to right now Pause the video and think of what's happening here and see if you could figure out the rule. And remember, use key terms and vocabulary that we've learned with this unit so far. So now that you're back, let's see if you figured out the rules. Well, the rule is kind of twofold. So here is the first way of looking at it. If you draw a line from the center of a circle to a chord, and this line is perpendicular to the chord, then the perpendicular line bisects the chord, which means it cuts the chord in two equal parts. Now, let's think about this. Here's my second part of the rule, which is pretty much the exact same as the first. It says the perpendicular bisector of a chord uh, that passes through the center of a circle creates a right angle with the chord. Well, these rules are almost the same. It's kind of like saying, well, we see this triangle and has three sides and they're all equal. That must mean it's an equilateral triangle and all angles are equal. But that's also like saying then, well, if I see this triangle and it's labeled an equilateral triangle, that must mean, hey, all sides are equal and all angles are equal. So that's kind of like what this is here. If this is true, then this must be true as well. Do you kind of get that? So that's pretty much saying if I have a chord and I have a perpendicular line from the center to the chord that intersects the chord, that means this line is going to bisect the chord. Also, that means then, well, if I knew that AC and BC were equal distance, and if I knew this line from the center bisected this chord AB, that must also mean then that this line from the center is perpendicular to the chord. So like this one at the very top, if we look at it, ah, 
It is not perpendicular to my chord. Therefore, it does not bisect the chord. Okay? This one here, my red line doesn't go through the center. This one here, my red line goes through the center, but line AB is not a chord. And then once again here, we have this line here, line, this red line, well, it doesn't go through the center. So it does, we're not sure if it bisects that chord. So let's look at our first example where we're going to apply this new fancy rule we learned. So it says, in the following circle, O is the origin, which means the center of the circle. AB is a chord measuring 24 centimeters long. OC is the perpendicular bisector of the chord measuring 5 centimeters long. What is the radius of the circle? So even without reading that and kind of give some of the answer away, I look at this line from the center of the circle and it is perpendicular to the red line. So the blue line from the center of the circle is perpendicular to the red line. And the red line is a chord. That must mean the red line must be bisected, which means it must be split in two. So now if I look at that, I know the distance of AC from here to here is equal to 12. So now I can find my radius using the Pythagorean theorem which is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Well, I look at this, we have 5 squared plus 12 squared. 5 squared is 25, and 12 squared is 144. That's going to end up giving me 169 centimeters squared. And I want to square root this because we have c squared, c squared, now c. I square root it, I'm going to end up getting 13 centimeters is my answer. So my radius, OA, is equal to 13 centimeters. Let's take a look at my second question. In this example, we have point O being in the center of the circle, and the line segment OC bisects the chord AB determine the value of x and y. So we have a line from the center of the circle that bisects a chord. As soon as we hear it bisects a chord, remember our law, well a line from the center that bisects a chord must be then perpendicular to that law, to that, sorry, chord. So this is perpendicular. Now I want to figure out what is x and y. Now if this is 90 degrees, well then this here must also be 90 degrees. So I have two angles that are the same, and we have one, two sides that are the same. So that must mean, I look at this here, this angle must equal this angle. So this must be y as well. And this 33 degrees must be equal to x. So let's first figure out y. So if we remember, a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And in this case, we have an angle that's 33 degrees and we have an angle that's 90 degrees, and we're trying to figure out my y. So all angles added up. So I'm going to end up getting 90, because 180 minus 90 is 90, minus 33 degrees is equal to y. So I end up getting y is equal to 57 degrees. Now x, we said x must be the same as this, because these must be identical or congruent triangles. So x is equal to 30. 3 degrees. Okay, because they must be congruent triangles because of side angle slot. All right, let's take a look at my last example. We have a circle that has a radius of 12 centimeters. What is the shortest distance from the center of the circle to a chord 18 centimeters long? So let's first draw a circle here. I want a circle that is 12 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle and we have a radius being 12 centimeters. So I'm going to make a radius like that, and we know that radius is 12 centimeters. Now it says there's a chord that is 18 centimeters long. So I'm going to connect this radius to the chord because that way we could try and make triangles. Always try and connect them if you can. So it's going to be connected like that. And I know that this here is 18 centimeters. Now, I want to know the distance of this chord to the center of the circle. 
So I want to figure out what is this distance here. Well, if I look at that, I draw straight from the center of the circle, the closest distance is going to bisect it. It's going to be right to the middle. It's going to be a perpendicular bisector I must draw. So in that case, we want it perpendicular. This is going to have to be 9 centimeters this side because it will bisect my cord to split it in half. So now I have a right angle triangle and I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case here, we could use again c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where c is my hypotenuse. But we know the hypotenuse, so I'm going to have to solve for one of my legs, a or b. So I'm going to put b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. Now, let's solve for this. I'm going to end up with 12 squared minus 9 squared, which is going to give me 144 minus 81. This is going to give me 63 centimeters squared. But that is b squared, so if I want b, I must square root it. Now, if we remember from before, we're going back to our estimating square roots, we must use our benchmarks. So I'm going to have uh, 7, which is 49, and we're going to have 8, which is 64. And 63 is super close to 64. It's pretty much right on it. So I'm going to say it's just less, so B is going to be equal to 7.9 centimeters. And that is my answer.